I'm going to report on this computer. All right, so I think everyone's here. Welcome to Animal Fun, guys. My name is Melissa McHugh McGrath, and guess what I get to do for work? I get to train dogs. That's my job, and it's so much fun. I get to work with puppies and dogs, dogs who are sad, dogs who are happy. I occasionally work with cats, but the cool thing about working with animals, especially dogs, the way that I teach, is that you can use those techniques, um, which is under the umbrella of positive reinforcement. We're going to talk about mark reward training and clicker training, but you guys don't need a clicker. Um, you just have to know that we're going to give our animals something that they really like every time they do the right thing, and they're more likely to keep doing that thing. So before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen so you guys can see some animals doing some cool things. Um, let's see, the first is going to be guinea pigs who are trained to do agility courses. Let me do this here so I don't have kids. There we go. And I know we had some fish here too, so we're gonna show a couple of fish tricks that way you guys can kind of get an idea how you can use positive reinforcement. So this fish is target trained too. So you first teach it to go to your hands to eat. So if you guys have fish, you can start first by teaching it to come up to the surface and touch your hand, and then target, which is actually what we're going to be doing today. So you saw that stick I had. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to make one for any animal in your home, and you can teach it to touch this thing, and then you can teach it to spin, jump through a hoop, go do the guinea pig Olympics. Look at that. So this fish knows every time I go through those fingers, I get food. I can't quite reach that part of my screen. Is it this one? Oh, this is chicken camp. So dog trainers like me to learn how, to, how animals learn, because all mammals learn the same. Whether it's uh, me as a human, you as a kid, your cat, your fish, your guinea pig, your dog, um, they all learn the same. And so the techniques that we use today, you can even use to teach a chicken to run an agility course. So she's going through weave poles. She's gonna go through the tunnel, up the little A-frame, and then a click and food. And it's that click in food that we're going to be talking about today. Let me stop my share. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that your animals know what a click stick is or a target stick is. So if you guys have, I'm gonna give you guys like five minutes. Oh good, I love it, Avi and Leah, good job. And Liv has one too. I know you. some of you guys came in a little early, so I told you guys to go do this. But for those who were not, I'm gonna give you guys four minutes. And for the rest of it, I'm just gonna kind of talk. But you guys are going to get either a stick or a pencil or a spoon, and you can either put tape on one side of it, or if it's a, um, if it's maybe something you can color, like a ruler, you can either put colored tape or you can color the end of it, just so that way it has two distinct things going on. So we've got the stick part that I hold and this, and I wanna show you what I'm going to use this for so you guys kinda have um, know where this is going. So, and I'm using a whole main one too, so that way you guys know that I'm, I'm not using my big fancy clicker stick, I'm using the same thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do. So that's my dog, Captain, over there, who's very lazy right now. Captain, hey, buddy. He's never seen this before. Sit. So I'm going to ask him, yes, his nose is going to touch it out of curiosity. What's this? And every time, yes, he touches it, I'm saying yes. And then I'm giving him a cookie. So when he looks at this, yes, treat. So now he knows, wait a minute, if I touch that, that always means I get food. So the other thing you're going to need with your animal is their favorite food. Yes. So 
So I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes so that way once, once I have him following this, I can move him over here, over here. I can get him to lay down. I can get him to sit up. So once they'll follow a stick, I can have him jump over a hoop. I can have him go through a tunnel. Because now he knows if I follow this, something good is, oh, yes, good job. Something good is going to happen. So why don't I give you guys two minutes, or I'll, I'll give it four. And if you guys have questions, you can always unmute yourself and ask me questions while I've, all of our friends are making their little target stick. Um, so time, go. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to pair the little stick that we made with our animal's favorite food. And so Captain really likes cheese. So instead of having him touch his nose to this and saying yes, and then giving him this whole piece of cheese, do you think he would get really sick if he trained and he got like half a cheese stick with each time he touched it? So instead, because cheese is very stinky, look how little that piece is. I can work with him for maybe the next 15 or 20 minutes on this half a stick of cheese because I'm only going to give him this little bit. So each time he touches, he gets a little taste of cheese. So let me move my computer back over here for, actually I'm going to put this on the floor. So you guys can see a little better. And I'm connected with a, a wired headset, so I can't go very far. Um, but Captain, sit. Uh, let's see, actually I'm going to undo my headset, so hopefully you guys will still be able to hear me. There we go. Okay, so hey, your speaker or increase volume to hear other things. Oh no, I think I'm okay. All right, so I'm going to ask him. I'm going to hold up my stick. Yes, yes, and that yes is important because that yes is eventually going to mean if you touch this, yes, food is coming. Yes, yes. It said layer. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, guys. So I'm not asking him to go far. Yes. So as he gets better, I'm going to start to move it further and further away. Yes. Yes. Good job. And that yes means he always gets food. So let's see how you guys are doing. Why don't you guys try it? So you want to imagine if your animal is, um, oh, here's a shoebox, right? So if I have an, a bigger animal, so like, um, like Bruce Wayne or like Captain, um, the dogs, you want to imagine this around their head, and you're going to have them kind of target their nose within this box. You're not going to have them move very far. Oh, that was my, that was my assignment for my last class. Leave it, come, loose leash, side sit, muscle training. Um, so you want to imagine a box about this size. Um, for our little friends, you might want it like for our like little guinea pig friends or even our fish friends. Once your fish comes over and goes, think you're going to go yes and drop their favorite food into the tank. For the guinea pigs, you might only be using a space about that big because like they have a much smaller head. So you want to kind of keep them in the same spot. So they, they just touch, 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 touch. Um, and then as they get better, you're going to move that target stick further and further away. So then they have to take a step to touch it. As they get better with it too, right now we're quiet and we're not saying anything except for yes when they get it right. Um, we're not going to say touch, we're not gonna say target, we're not gonna say hit the stick. We're not <laughs> telling them what to do. Um, we just want them to see if they can figure it out because they don't speak English yet. They don't know what we want. Intuitive, we know. We want them nose to stick, nose to stick, but they don't know if that's what that's for. And that's why we have two different colors because this looks different. They're like, what is that? And it's usually their natural curiosity, which is gonna make them go, fuck. Is anybody having difficulty getting their animal touching the stick? Okay. 
Let me see if I can scroll here. You've got uh, C. So now that we're going to make it harder, we're going to see if we can get it. If you guys could mute yourselves real quick. Let me just mute. Boop, 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 boop. I think I got everyone muted. Okay. So now what we're going to try to do, we're going to see if we can get them to follow the target stick. So Captain already knows spin. So I'm going to see if maybe I can call my cat in here in a minute. See if I can get my cat to do it. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what I want it to look like so that way you know what the behavior is that you're that we're going for and realize you're going to make a lot of mistakes and that's okay. Um, you guys are just learning now how to talk to your animals. So what I'm going to do, this is how they teach um, dolphins at like SeaWorld. They use this target stick. And if you have ever heard of clicker training, uh, where'd my clicker go? Um, it clicks. This is a very quiet clicker. Let me see if I have a slightly louder one. Oh, I do. You guys heard that? Every time that click happens, he gets a food. So just like with um, us saying yes and they get food, you could use a clicker too. And that might work better for the fish who might not understand human language at all. So using a clicker might go through the water a lot better. If you don't have a clicker, don't worry about it. You know a pen, uh, when you go click to get the pen to go turn on so you can write with it, you can go ahead and use a click for a pen too. I see our, our friend uh, Liv has her hand up. You can go ahead and unmute. Do you think you could snap too? You could, or you can make a verbal like, like if you ever ride horses, you hear uh, horseback riders do that a lot. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So the clicker is just a neutral sound. And I use this often if I'm working with animals who are um, maybe more shy of humans, um, where maybe a human voice would be scary to an animal. I might use a clicker instead so that they don't have to hear me keep talking. Um, or animals underwater. So like sea lions, fish, um dolphins things like that all right but now we're going to use that idea i'm going to use this click stick or this this target stick if you guys are googling it later it's called a target stick and you can buy fancy ones that have a little ball at the end i have one that um expands out so i can control the distance um or you can just use this you don't need to be fancy and that's why i really like teaching this to kids because you don't need to be fancy you can get artistic with it so i'm going to ask captain say, he already knows sitting down. You, we're not doing those tricks today. I'm gonna move back. I'm gonna see if I can get him to come to me. Oh, I dropped all of his treats on the floor. Of course I did. Touch. Yeah. Touch. Yes. So I'm gonna see if I can put a word touch to this. I'm gonna move him back. So I'm moving him now through space, and I'm putting him exactly where I want him to go. Touch. Yes. Good job. So if you guys want to try that, and I'm going to just show the next part to you guys. I'm so happy for training. So I'm going to now see if I can get him to move in a circle. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Uh oh. My dog is pretty fast, so I have to move fast with him. If you have a slower animal, you might have to move really slow. So I'm going to go get my cat so that you guys can see how this looks like with a slower animal who's never really been trained. She's 13 and has arthritis. So she's going to move a lot slower, so hopefully you guys will be able to see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go grab her. I'm going to kick this nerd out, and I'll be right back. You guys keep practicing your touches, okay? All right, I'll be right back. All right, now she has never seen a, a touch stick. Oop, and there she goes. But I can't use dog food to train a cat because she might get sick. So I'm gonna get some special kitty treats for her and then we're gonna demonstrate that. Oh, now 
now you're interested. Do your cats do this at home too? Do your animals do this? <laughs> they get very excited about things. Let's see. All right. So again, I have food that's appropriate for the animal I'm working with. I have my little target stick. I'm gonna see if I can first, yes, and treat. Yes, and treat. So that yes means food is coming. And if your animal won't touch the stick, you can just start with saying, yes, cookie, yes, cookie, yes, cookie, yes, cookie, and get them understanding that yes means something good, and then present this very close to them. What do you see? Yes. And in this case, her cookie is dried fish, because cat. Let's see if I can get her to move a little bit. So if I can train a 13-year-old cat to do dog tricks, I think you guys can teach your guinea pig to jump over a little, a little fence eventually. Rowie. So I'm over here. Yes. So I'm having her move a little bit to get to it. And I'm trying to be mindful because she has arthritis, so her back end hurts her a lot. So I don't want to ask her to jump up very much. If you have an animal that's a big jumper and you don't want them to jump, you can um, just keep the stick at their nose or lower, so if they're not having to jump a lot. So if, you're an if your parents don't want to teach your animal to jump up high, then you could just not do that, that's fine. But if you think it's cute and your parents are okay with it, you can teach your animal to jump up high too. All right, so now that I've got her moving for this, I'm gonna see if I can get her to go in a circle. You guys ready? You wanna see if she can do it? Do you think she can? I don't know, guys. Touch. Oh, I lost her. <laughs> She's gonna rub up her face. So if your animal blows you off like that, that's normal. See, she came back. Ready? What's this? You wanna go this way? Yes, good kitty. So with her, you see how much more slowly I have to go to get her to do the behavior. Whereas with Captain, I had to work really fast to keep him moving because he was just kind of a spaz. And he's done a lot of training, so he knows what to expect. She's never done it, so she's a little bit more cautious. She's also really old. Um, but the other thing I wanted you to notice, and this is how you can tell if your animal is getting tired. Do you guys ever get tired if you're in school? And like your teacher is just talking at you and talking at you and talking at you and you're just like, I can't do another math problem, or you're thinking about dance class later, or you have something else that's on your mind and you just can't focus. Well, our animals do that too. Most animals work really well in two to five minute intervals, and that's it. So if you ever take an animal training class, people like me will talk at you for an hour, um, but that's that way you can go home and try it in small little pieces throughout the week. So that way your animal isn't doing a whole hour of training because that can make their brains tired and it's a lot of work. So when Rohan didn't understand what she was supposed to do with the stick, she went over and she rubbed her face. You guys couldn't see it. She has a little scratching post here. She went over and she's like, I'm tired. And she kind of rubbed her face up against it. That was her thinking. That might be like you if you bite your nails and you're in school. Like, I'm thinking this is a hard problem. I don't know what's expected of me. Or uh doodling on your homework i was a big doodler um i also bit my nails a lot and i still do when i'm getting a lot of information and i'm not quite sure what to do with it so if you're watching your animal and they kind of check out for a minute don't keep forcing them back give them a little break and they'll come back if you've made it fun for them so i'm going to try her again i'm going to see if i can get her to spin you notice how when I went one way, she didn't want to do it, but I went the other way and she was. She was comfortable with it. So keep that in mind too. If you're doing a spin trick, there she goes, she got halfway, and that was too much for me to ask of her. So I might next time just ask her to do half and then treat her for halfway. So always meet your animal where they are. Don't feel that you have to push them to do the entire behavior, because this is something that's brand new to most of your pets, right? So I'm gonna ask her to touch. Yes, and she seems to like touch. So I'll keep her there for a few minutes and then see if I can make it a little harder. So while you think that spin might be really easy, and conceptually it is, if I told you spin, you would. 
But if I said it in a foreign language and you didn't understand what I was asking of you, you might be a little confused. Me telling this cat spin when she doesn't know what it means can be really confusing. So I have to show her, but I don't want to pick her up and move her. I want her to figure it out on her own because if she figures it out on her own, she's going to learn it so much better. Touch. She's thinking. And she's calling me a jerk with her eyes. What do you think? So I'm going to wait her out and see if she comes back to the stick. She hasn't walked away yet. She's thinking. Yes, good kitty. So I could have, and many of my adult students would have just kept going, touch, touch, touch. But I like to wait for the animal to think and figure it out. And it, she always has the choice. This is always at her pace. If she decides, nah, and she gets up and walks away, she gets up and walks away. I'm not gonna make a cat <laughs> do something she doesn't wanna do. But the thing is I wanna make sure that she has been reinforced enough with this stick that she's going to choose more often than not to touch it. Rohan, touch. And now I'm holding my arm in a different way. Yes. One other thing to keep in mind when you guys are doing these sticks, I'm not as up on my guinea pig visual acuity um, or what colors a fish can see. So if you guys are doing this at home and you realize that maybe the color on the end of your stick isn't working, you can try a different color. If you are, oh, also if you're doing this with a fish, make sure that you're not using a marker because unless it's a, a safe marker, because um, you don't want like Sharpie chemicals in the water. So you wanna make sure that what you're using, you're, you're thinking ahead and that it's a safe tool to use. So maybe just a, a little bit of tape at the end of a stick is maybe better for a fish. Roll on, touch. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna pause it here. I'm gonna talk to you guys and see how it's going with you guys. And then maybe we'll try a little jump. Do you guys wanna try to make a little jump for your animals? Okay, I see some excitement. So give me one second to pause this. So for those animals who aren't interested in the rewards, if they're touching the stick or touching your fingers or doing a thing that you're asking them to do, and then they're not interested in the rewards, keep in mind rewards are in the eye of the recipient. So I could give my cat that treat she doesn't like and say, hey, I'm giving you a treat. But if she doesn't like it, do you think she's going to be more likely to keep doing that trick or less likely? So if the, the, uh, the analogy I really like to give, how many of you guys have gotten clothes from your grandparents? And sometimes, great outfit. Sometimes it's like, thanks grandma, right? <laughs> or you get, um, somebody's like, I made you a present. And then you get it, you're like, thanks. Like the, the, the intention was good, but it might not be something that you really wanted. When I was a kid, we had these things called CD, uh, CD Walkmans. They're basically like little portable CD players that you could put a disc in and it would play music. And at the time it was fancy technology, like an iPhone, but in hindsight, it's actually pretty old. <laughs> I'm old guys. But if you that CD Walkman, I wanted it so bad. It would be like if I had asked my parents today, can I have an iPhone? Can I have an iPhone? Can I have an iPhone? And then instead of getting an iPhone, your parents gave you like a phone that plugs into the wall. That like, <laughs> that you, like a rotary phone. Have you guys seen those where you like hit the rotary? No, oh no, I see a lot of blank faces. Um, if, if they gave me like an old timey phone that you see in pictures, right? You can't really take that with you to school. You can't call your friends on it. You can't play games on it, right? That wouldn't be what you wanted. Um, but for me, my dad got me what's called a CB radio because he, he misunderstood what I asked. So that's what truckers use when they're driving and they talk to people like a walkie talkie. So my dad misunderstood and he was so excited to give me what I wanted. And when I got it, I was like, 
know. And I, I'm embarrassed. I started crying because I was so upset. <laughs> but if, if your animal isn't rewarded by the thing you're giving them, think about what it is that they really would like and what they are motivated to work for. Does that make sense? Cool. So now what we're going to try, I'm going to see if I can get Rohan to jump over something. So first I have to find something that she can jump over. Um, so for your guinea pig friends, you can go ahead and you can maybe make um, maybe some paper towel tubes. Do you guys have any of those kicking around? Um, for your fish, we can start doing like maybe a finger jump or even like a little finger here. And so we can send you guys some fish videos for those who have fish. For our dog friends, this is easy. You can use your leg. Um, but let's see if I can first start by doing it with my leg um, because that way I don't have to get up and leave you guys. But you guys can kind of figure out like what apparatus would work best for your particular animal. So the guinea pigs, we're going to keep them very low because they are low rider animals. Um, but let's try. She's never done this trick before either. With Captain, I usually stand up and I stick my leg right out. So I'm usually up this high and he'll jump over that. Um, but Rohan, while she's a cat, again, she's old. I don't want to hurt my cat. So I'm going to start really low. I don't want her to go under my leg, which is easier, right? Animals are going to do what's easiest. But I'm going to see. Rowie, hi, touch. Yes. So I got her to go over my leg. And it didn't look that impressive, but she was able to go over an obstacle to get a cookie. So I yesed her as soon as her nose touched my little target stick, and then she got a cookie. This part's gonna be harder, because now she has to, she knows the, the food is in my left hand. The target stick is all the way over here. Yes. And so I'm feeding her from the other side. So now she's actually starting to follow the stick, because now the stick means food. The stick means a food she likes. Where are we? Touch. So I'm going to wait her out. And she's just going to walk behind me because she's a cat. So I could just get mad at her or I could just wait her out. She'll eventually come back because she really likes this food. Here she is. Yes. Animals will always do what works. And so she's like, well, what if I go behind her? I have a wall here so she couldn't go. So your animal might try to go around behind you. Your animal might try to go in front. If your animal is cutting through or trying to find a shortcut so they don't have to go over, you can put your foot up against a bed. For the guinea pigs, they could probably run under. Here she goes. Yep, yeah, good job. Roll on. Um, for the guinea pigs, they could run under your fish. Probably not going to walk around your leg because he's not walking. But you could come up with um, maybe like a little jump for him so he can jump over it. Um, for the dogs, legs are really easy because you're pretty portable and so are the, the dogs. Um, let me see if I can get her to do one more. I'm going to make my leg go up a little higher. You see how I've got some space here? Rowie, can I see what she does? She knocked me here. I'm thinking. She's thinking. She's like, this looks harder. It's also yeah. harder for me too because like I have to use a lot of muscle to keep my leg up so I hope she makes a decision fast because my legs are getting tired. Rowie, hi, what's this? How she jump over? Woo, yes, good girl. But you notice I didn't say the word jump. I didn't say over. I'm not going to call something a word until I am convinced the animal can do it. So once she does three or four jumps, then I would say Rowie, jump instead of touch. And so that right now she's going for the target. But eventually, so I don't have the target visible to her. Rowie, touch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rowie, jump. Let's see what she does. She's like, this is hard. I don't know what you want me to do. Oh, she's thinking about it. Yes. So I can start to call it jump once I can bet Maybe a, maybe a video game. If I could bet a video game or iPad time that she will do it, and 
if I didn't want to lose uh, my favorite video game, I'm not going to ask her to jump. I will just stick with the target stick. But once she really starts to understand, oh, when I see the leg, I jump over it. Let's see what she does. She might even just volunteer it. Um, I'm not even asking her. I'm just going to see if she's seeing my leg as something to go over. She's hoping that maybe there's something easier for her to do. <laughs> um, but sometimes animals will just kind of think, oh, here she comes. Yes. So I didn't ask her to do it. She just saw my leg. Oh, that's a dog food. You don't want dog food, do you, really? Here, good job. But I always yes and I always treat for the behavior I like, regardless of if I asked her to do it or not, because that's like money in the bank. Every time she does it, she gets paid for it. It makes it more likely she's going to do it again in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me pause the video here. We have a few minutes left. I'll stay on the call, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to answer, uh, ask them. But we're just gonna kind of go over a quick little bit. So first, we always mark and reward the things we like. So we mark with yes or a click. Oh, she's like, I like the clicker. Um, because that clicker, for her, always means she gets a treat. So if you're doing clicker training and you have little kids in your home, like little siblings who are gonna pick up the clicker and go click, 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 click. Um, you don't want that clicker to become background noise. You want that to be meaningful. So when I hear a click, I get food. It's kind of like when you're, uh, if you're um, computer rings, if you guys are playing, if you guys are on Hangouts or on a, on a call with your friends and your friends call you and you hear that special ring and you're like, it's my friend. Um, you want your animal to be like, it's my friend, like that level of excitement when they hear a clicker or hear you say yes, as you do when you see that your friends are calling you on Google Hangouts or on FaceTime or whatever the case may be. Uh, for me, every time my cell phone goes ding, I always look just because I, it's habit. And that's what you want that clicker to mean. If you're using a clicker or a pen that goes click, 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 if your um if you're not using a clicker that's fine you can use your voice you can go ah! every time it's you can go ah! um i have a student that goes bingo every time her animal does the right thing i usually use the word yes so throughout this video if you guys go back and watch it you're going to see with both rohan and captain i'm saying yes the second that cold nose touches my hand or the second their little nose touches that stick yes um, and that yes, you see how she's looking at me? That's a bridge. That means food is coming even though I don't have it in my hand right now. There we go. So yes always means food or a click always means food. Um, meet your animal halfway, meet them where they are. And if they're struggling, that's on the teacher. That's not on the learner. That's not on the student. So if your teacher is explaining something and you're not understanding it, that's not your fault that you don't understand it, right? That means that somebody has to find a different way of explaining it to you or make it work for you. Um, so the if you're not getting it, if your animal isn't getting it, the teacher, which is you guys, you guys are all teachers now, you guys have to be creative in finding a, a way to make it easier for your learner. Um, so if um, if Rohan wasn't getting, when, when she went one way, I was trying to get her to spin one way and she couldn't do it, so I tried the other way and she could. So maybe her hips are hurting, right? She can't tell me. So I had to just try to figure out what would work. So I went slower and I went the other direction and she was able to do it. Um, so don't be upset if your animal isn't doing what you want you will always be able to find something they can do and then you can build off of it. <laughs> animals. <laughs> I live with a bunch of animals. Right, Rowie? Really? All right, you guys did awesome. This is going to go up on the YouTube page. Um, it's gonna go in two places. It's gonna go on the Somerville Media Center YouTube thing that uh, Heather's sending out for students. And you can also uh, find it on, um, I also have a YouTube page, Melissa McHugh McGrath, C-P-D-T-K-A. That's just the fancy initials after my name. Um, and my name is in the, um, in the description for the class. 
And I think there might even be a link to that YouTube channel there. So you guys will see this there too. So there are two places where you can find this if you need help or you need to get back. I, I see your mirror. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all did great. I'm going to stop the recording. And if you guys have questions, feel free to 